researchers, debaters, and debunkers. The so-called force of gravity is only required to have us believe that we can stick to an imaginary spinning ball Earth. We are told that it is the entire mass of the Earth, that is the density of the Earth in a specific volume, a sphere, is responsible for the weight of objects on or above the Earth. However, we can see from everyday natural science that the idea that there is a constant force pulling everything down towards the Earth is simply wrong. So keep in mind that we are told our weight is a direct result of the Earth being of a particular density held in a sphere of a particular size and volume. That is to theorize that if the Earth were less dense, we would weigh less. And if it were more dense, we would weigh more. So this means that every atom in these jugs of water, the jugs themselves, is being pulled down to the Earth because of the Earth's specific density in a specific volume, its mass. An external force acting on everything on the Earth. So, of course, with the presupposition that there is a downward force called gravity, which is only really measured when dropping things through the air, we then have to counter that force with a buoyant force. But we can see here with these two jugs of water that one is more buoyant than the other. We have the same amount of water, but the jug on the right has more buoyant water because it's more dense with salt. We just made the water denser. We just have a difference in the relative density, not because of any force created by the mass of the Earth, but more to do with the density of the egg's immediate surroundings. And so now we make the water less dense by adding some of the non-salted water. We have an egg floating about at an equilibrium within the water. But if you believe that we live on a globe and stick to it because of the force of gravity, then you have to say that we now have an opposing force, a buoyant force acting on the egg. And we have the pressure of the water This is my egg. 
This is my parts per million counter. This is going to measure the parts per million of both these fluids. This is tap water, regular tap water. That is the same tap water, but it's been preloaded to save some time with some salt from this to give it a density variation. It's going to measure the density of the, the tap water. So while it settles down, it takes a little bit of time. Okay, that's coming in at 212 parts per million tap water. Don't know what that means. It's just a number. It could be unicorn farts. It's just a tap. It's just a number. So 212 is the recorded density of this one. Mind you, I should have showed that to the camera, shouldn't I? It's coming in at 214 now. So if you if you want to zoom in on that, it says 214 parts per million. Okay. Back to zero. When I do it to this one, this one is saying this is 302 parts per million. Again, if you want to zoom into that, you can have a look. Okay, so basically 200 to 300. Let's try this one again. Two hundred eight. Yeah, it's about 200. Then this one's about 300. Yeah, so it's 200 and 300, right? So one's got 100 more parts per million than the other. That tells me that there is a density variation between the two. So what we're going to do is we're going to see what happens when this egg is dropped into here. It sinks and it's touching the floor. Let's take the egg out. Now we'll see what happens when we put it into a more dense medium. So whilst that was settling down, this was done last night because it takes ages for it to dissolve and it, um, get to a point where it's saturated. And I've got some residue at the bottom that is salt. Um, so at the bottom at least it's getting relatively saturated. So I'm going to give it a stir to stir it up so that the uh, it evenly distributes a little bit better. Because what I'm hoping to do is get the egg so that it's just sat above the bottom of the thing. Some people will argue and complain and say that I've not, I shouldn't have stirred it, I should have left it as a gradient. It doesn't really matter. Because what we're trying to establish is, if the medium is different, does it make a displacement? Does it force a displacement? If it forces a displacement, according to Newton, there is force. This, this is normal table salt from your favourite supermarket. Other supermarkets are available. We can tell that the density of the egg is equal to the part in the glass where the, the liquid is. What I'm now going to try and prove is that if I change the density of the medium, I will cause the, the uh, effect by adding salt. So if I can change it, because I'm manipulating, I'm the experimenter and I'm manipulating my presumed cause, my independent variable is the medium, that egg moves, I've caused it. We know the parts per million is about 300. All we need to do is pour some of this in. Hey, what do you know? The eggs immediately moved. Didn't have to wait for that, did we? So, what's the explanation? Well, I'm gonna measure this now. This isn't gonna be much more above 300. However, if it reads anything above 300, then that'll do for me. So the density is reading around about 309, 308, 309. You can have a look at that on the camera if you want to zoom in. But I've just made the egg move. So what's the cause? Well, scientific method states that the independent variable is the presumed cause. And I presumed that changing the density of the liquid would, with salt would cause a displacement. 